about the church. Um, you naughty person. I've been told. <laughs> um, the castle is old. There's been a castle, as we said, on that site since 1200. The church is even older in origins. We don't know how old. We're pretty confident there was a Saxon church on this site that's before the Norman Conquest. We know that at the time of the Doomsday Book, which was a great kind of record of everything in the country, made in 1086 um, for William I, uh, we know that there was a church on this site then, and we think it was rebuilt by the Normans in stone. And gradually over the centuries, bits have been added to it all the time. Um, I explained to some of you about the market and the fair, which were used to take place um, in the high street. And so that, that started in 1200. And at that time, obviously, the village grew. And the church had to grow as well, because everybody had to go to church in those days. They raised the roof towards the end of the 14th century. So originally, it had a sort of pointed roof, a bit like a, a sort of ridge tent, if you're not ridge tents alike. Um, and then they, they literally put in this clear story, this line of windows, and raised the roof. They added the tower and the steeple. They rebuilt the aisles. And all the time, it's been changing over the centuries. And it goes on changing and adding things right through to the present day. You've been looking at the Tiffany window. That's only about 100 years old. And we still make alterations. I hope that they're good alterations. So for example, for the millennium, we screened off the tower and moved the bell ringers upstairs so that we have got a loo now if anybody needs it before you go back actually down in the tower an area for the choir to row and then even more recently over in the corner we've added a little kitchen so we can have coffee after the services so all the time we're trying to improve it but in a, in a good way you know trying not to make alterations that spoil it so i hope you've enjoyed your visit to kim Rolson and found it interesting thank you very much you can stay right up here with me nora <laughs> a couple things if it wasn't pointed out to you correct me where i mistake the uh royal air force the yes <laughs> The, there's an air base, the headmaster mentioned it to right. you, which was a, to start with at the beginning of World War II was a, an RAF base. And then when your people came into the war, as the war progressed, um, it became a USAF um, air base. And this, the memorial is, is there, just above the radiator. There. And there's a book, book telling you all about it. That's, yep. yeah. And I also want to mention, we hadn't said it earlier, you know, over to the right is the Edward Mariah. Wingfield uh, Memorial. Uh, in 2016, uh, members of the uh, Wingfield Family Society, uh, Jocelyn Wingfield. Six. Six. 2006. Six. Yeah, sorry. 2006, Jocelyn Wingfield was here. Sam Batza was here. Um, what's Lindsay's last name? She, didn't she sing? Lindsay. Uh, Lizzie. 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 Right. What was here? Um, were you, Richard, you were here? No, you missed that one, okay. But if you're interested to see the occasion of the ceremony um, that was here at the Mass, that's on the website, um, and you can watch that. Uh, it's quite interesting because it was, I mean, the Mass was held in here. Was it the bis was a bishop, the bishop here? Bishop, yes. The bishop was here, but there was a procession that took place, went down the um, castle from the church to the castle. Correct, and they were in their like, like what robes or they? Lord mayor's bodyguard, sixteen hundred and twelve. Yeah, I think. All decked out and so forth. Jocelyn, I think, you, weren't you somewhere near the big, the front of it or something? They couldn't rehearse. Okay. And they had to come here and rehearse all of them, and in the real life, they're sort of a, a top accountants and lawyers and goodness knows what in the city of London. They then change into their robes. Weekend, come up here. So you got a friend of mine, I said, wear a bowler hat and a suit and carry a rolled umbrella and march down the front telling everyone get out of the way for the police and the traffic and I'll tell them to follow you and it worked. <laughs> <laughs> and that's on the video as well so you can see all that if you're interested. The video was done by the head the video man for NASA who happens to be a brick and he said I've only got an hour and 20 minutes, so we gave him exact, the exact time, he said, do that. 
That's very important because, I mean, how many years were you looking for Edward Mariah Wingfield's grave? Oh, lots of years, but when Lee became president, he turned around to me and said, you've got one job, nothing else, you can drop all your other duties to find it. <laughs> so it took about nine months. And when we found it, the guy who was called Wingfield, who was about to give his fortune, and I mean fortune, to the Jamestown uh, thing, whatever it's called now, PBA as it's named term. Um, he said, oh, that's in the US historical magazine, X111, page three. And then that appeared, but nobody else knew. <laughs> Preservation Virginia. Because yeah. the, when, you, when you were buried or whatever, married, Christian or buried, mm -hmm. here, or anywhere, you had to send a special copy of your church records to the diocese office. And what we never thought about was the diocese office here in 1631 was about three or four hundred miles north of here, in Durham or Northumberland or somewhere as it is, Nora. Lincoln. Lincoln. And there it was. Yeah. His burial. He was buried, we thought, somewhere outside those windows there, but it's not clear exactly where. Yeah. And so, um, as uh, I, thank, I thank you for your, your time and assistance. Uh, well, Wingfield Family Society wants to present to you uh, two little gifts, uh, a Wingfield bag what? for you, and then uh, we have here what we refer to, or I refer to, as the Wingfield cookbook. Oh, oh uh, lovely. This yes. was uh, published, uh, uh, I don't know how many years ago, uh, 1994. Uh, by Gail the Mansfield. Yes. Uh, but what's interesting about this, or at least I think it's quite interesting, is besides the wonderful recipes, there's little historical photos yes. or sketches that were drawn things about the Mansfield family that's in here. I should enjoy and that. So Thank I, you very much. These Roy two are enjoyed yours. tasting it. And, so, and as I was just I was saying earlier on. Thank you. Um, when I share groups around, I often carry pictures around with me. And I carry them in the cloth bag, and I have various cloth bags, but this one would be perfect for carrying <laughs> you know, things around. So I'll think of the Wingfields yeah, every so, time. Well, thank, thank you very much. <laughs> Edward Mariah Wingfield's godmother is Mary Tudor. No. Yes. No. Oh, Mary, um, yeah. the, the name mm -hmm. of those Mar Edward Mariah Thomas Mariah was in the same generation before Thomas Mariah mm -hmm. Wingfield was because. Um, <clears throat> when Louis XII died, was married to Henry VIII's younger sister Mary, the king had already said, No, you jolly well go and marry that old man, and when he dies, you can marry who you want. Well, unfortunately, um, uh, the king sent the Duke of Suffolk, Brandon, was it Charles Brandon, wasn't it? Yes. Out to uh, get her back when Louis XII died and uh, taking Sir Richard Wingfield with him. And they couldn't resist each other for two seconds, not least because the king's son had designs on Mary. So they got married. They didn't go till Henry VIII. And Richard Wingfield and Charles Brampton must have known and must have been present, hence him being allowed to suddenly put Mariah after their Christian names like it's done in Spain or wherever. Spain has, does that sort of thing. Um, and there it is. And the tape was cut over there by um, the daughter of Edward Mariah Wingfield the Seventh, um, who's just been very ill, um, Mariah Wingfield Butler. So there's the name coming on down of Richmond. Excellent. So I don't have my phone went dead, so I don't know what the time is. But yeah, we're, I, I shouldn't hurry that because you will hit the peak of the mm -hmm. traffic. So if you want to spend a few more minutes browsing around the church, and certainly if you want to use the loo before you, um, you go, or if you want to walk around the outside of the church, it's very pleasant. Um,
Um, you'll see on the outside the entrance to the Montague Vault. We're into Wingfield Vault, but there's a Montague Vault where all the Dukes of Manchester are buried. The entrance to that. So it's very, it's very nice. I, I would not aim to get up the car to drink before half past because it's, it will be so busy right. um, at the moment. Okay, it's right. one fifteen. How long does it take us to drive back? To where we're going? It's about uh, forty-five minutes or so. We are leaving Bushard now, so it takes a long time to be a bit longer. Okay. Um, but I would tell Darren, would you reply in the letter to see when you got to start half past four or a bit later? Um, what do you think, Louise? Would, would it be all right stopping there at half past four? Yeah, half no earlier than half past four. Okay. And we'll have to walk back up towards the castle. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you. And I, I would like to say one thing, uh, Richard. And Diana, can you come up here real quick? Because we were kind of in a hurry this morning and then we went in to have lunch and so forth um, and didn't have an opportunity to properly uh, present uh, Richard Wingfield and his wife, Diana. Um, Jocelyn and Richard are uh, fourth, cousins. fourth cousins. And so he's also from the, the, the Forest Court, court linked. Uh, branch. Um, and you live in? Reading, Whitchurch on Thames, which is between Reading and Oxford, okay. on the Thames River Thames. Okay. Yeah. So they joined us here for today for lunch in the, in the castle and so forth. And so, um, and also Richard has written a few articles, at least during my time with the Family Society. He did a really good one. Uh, didn't you do well, one? There was one recently about Richard Wingfield. This Richard Wingfield, that was in there. He ended his days in Toledo. Correct. And he, he died there. He was on an embassy from Henry VIII. And he was with the Bishop of London, or one of the Bishops of London, and uh, he, he died, most embarrassingly, in the middle of this mission. He was two or three months in Toledo, and he was buried there. And the Bishop came back to, to say that he was properly treated and buried there. We went out there about three years ago and uh, to see if we could find a memorial or a trace or any kind of indication, but there was no trace at all, I'm afraid. Right. And then you also but, did... But scope for the Wingfield family society at some future time to get to Toledo and perhaps to put a plaque on for Richard Wingfield, because I mean, he's commemorated everywhere else, it seems to me. And today we've had a wonderful day connected to his birth, his life, and his death, geographically and historically, which has been terrific. It's been a huge pleasure for us to be able to join you today. Thank you very much indeed. Thank, uh, thank you for your yeah, Thank you. Uh, thank you for a brilliant organization, as far as I can see. Thank you.